In this video, we will make mole mash, which is kind of like whack-a-mole. There are several varieties of this app that are out there. This is coming from the original App Inventor uh, textbook. And what you'll build will look like this. It has your Android screen with an area where the mole will randomly move, a reset button to clear the score, and a place to show hits and a place to show misses. To get started, you will create a project called Mole Mash. And I've already created one called Mole Mash, and I've already hooked it up to the emulator right here. So anything that happens will uh, automatically be connected. You'll need a canvas, an image sprite, which is different from an image, a sound that vibrates when the mole is touched, labels to say hits and misses, a horizontal arrangement to place these labels on the screen, a button to reset the numbers to zero, and a clock to make the mole move once per second. And that's reflected here in a table. This tells you what the component is, which group you'd get them from, and those palette groups are over here on the left-hand side, what you'll call it, and what its purpose is. So let's just follow the steps. Drag in a canvas component, leaving it with the default name canvas1. Set its width to fill parent, and set its height to 300. So we'll find our canvas under drawing and animation, drag a canvas in, leave its name the same, set its width to fill parent, and set its height to 300 pixels. Now we'll drag an image sprite component from the animation group onto the palette. There's image sprite, drag it onto the palette. Placing it beneath canvas, uh, sorry, uh, place it anywhere on canvas one. Click rename at the bottom of the components list and change its name to mole. Set its picture property to mole.png, which you uploaded earlier. Well, we didn't, but we will. So we're going to change its name by using the rename button to mole. And this mole picture they're referring to, you can find a link to on my website. You can find it also in several other places. I've already downloaded that graphic to my desktop, and I need to upload it to the media section. So I'm going to choose the file. It's the mole picture. And now the mole will be uploaded to my media section so I can use it later. So what it says is set its picture property to mole.png. So we make sure the mole is highlighted. We find picture. We choose mole.png. So now we have a mole. Drag in a button component from the basic group, placing it beneath canvas one. Drag in a button component from the basic group. Well, the basic group is now called user interface. Drag in a button, placing it beneath canvas one. Rename it reset button and set its text property to reset. So we highlight the button, we rename it to reset button. And we set its text property to reset. Drag in a clock component. It will appear at the bottom of the viewer in the non-visible component section. Drag in a clock component. Where do we find that? Clock. In this version of App Inventor, it's under sensors. Drag it in, and it shows up at the bottom, right down there. Drag a sound component from the media group. It too will appear in the non visible components section. Your screen should now look something like Figure 3 2, although your mobile may be in a different position. And our screen does look like that. We will now place the components for displaying the user's score, specifically the number of hits and misses. Drag in a horizontal arrangement from the screen arrangement group. Drag in a horizontal arrangement from the screen arrangement group. That's now called layout, and we need a horizontal arrangement. Where are we putting it? Placing it beneath the button and keeping the default name.
drag two labels from the basic group into horizontal arrangement one. Rename the left label to hits label and set its text property to hits. Rename the right label to hits count label and set its text property to zero. So we're getting two labels. I'm putting them both inside there. The left one gets renamed hits label and its text property hits. The right one gets renamed hits count label and a text property of zero. Drag in a second horizontal arrangement, placing it beneath horizontal arrangement 1. Drag two labels into horizontal arrangement 2. Rename the left label to Mrs. Label and set its text property to Mrs. Rename the right label to Mrs. Count Label and set its text property to zero. and our screen does look like the book. Figure 3-4 shows the coordinate system for App Inventor with 0, 0 being in the top left, 200, 0 top right, so X moves you this way, and Y increasingly moves you down. With the mole being 36 wide and 42 tall, the furthest to the bottom right you can go is 200 minus 36 and 300 minus 42 or 164 by 258. So here we have a procedure called move mole which will use those values. So to create it click the definition drawer under the built-in tab in the blocks editor. So switch to the blocks editor and they say hit the definition drawer. Well, in this version of App Inventor, we find something called procedures. And we drag out one of these procedures that's a to-do procedure. Click the text procedure and enter move mole. Since we want to move the mole, click on the click the my blocks tab click the mole drawer and drag mole.move2. So here we find mole and we find mole.move2. Note that we need to provide x and y coordinates. To specify that the new x coordinate for the mole should be between 0 and canvas width minus mole width, Click the built-in tab to get to the built-in procedures. Click the math drawer, so we find math right there. Drag out a random integer block. Putting the plug on its left side into the X socket. Change number 1 and enter 0. Discard the number 100 by clicking it and pressing your keyboard's delete or by dragging it to the trash can.
Let's drag it to the trash can. Click the math drawer and drag a subtraction block into the 2 socket. Click my blocks to get your components. Click the Canvas 1 drawer and scroll down until you see canvas1.width. There's canvas1. Scroll down until we find canvas1.width. There it is. Similarly, click the mole and drag out mole.width. Here's the mole, and there's mole.width. So we're choosing a random integer from 0 to the width of the canvas minus the width of the mole for our x. Follow a similar procedure to specify that the y coordinate should be a random integer from 0 to canvas 1.height minus mole.height. So under math, we find a random integer. from 0 to the difference of canvas 1's height minus the mole's height. Try your mole move to uh, to try out your mole.move to, right click the block and choose do it. Well, in this version we don't have a do it. Now that you've written the move mole procedure, let's make use of it. Because it's so common for programmers to want something to happen when an app starts, there's a block for that very purpose called screen1.initialize. Find screen1 and drag out screen1.initialize. Click the My Definitions drawer where you will see a call move mole block. I don't see a my definitions drawer, but I do see procedures, and there I find call move mole. Making the mole move every second will require the clock component. We left clock 1's timer interval property at its default value of 1000, or 1 second. That means that every second, whatever is specified in a clock 1 timer block will take place. Here's how to set that up. Click My Blocks, click the clock 1 drawer, and drag out clock 1.timer. So we find clock 1, and we drag out clock 1.timer. Click the My Definitions drawer and drag out a call move mole block. We found that under Procedures, Call Move Mole. So now we've plugged the move mole into our clock one timer. If that's too fast or too slow, you can change clock one's timer interval property. So let's see what our app is looking like in the emulator. Is it connected? We can connect it by resetting the connection and running it on the emulator. And there it is. There is our mole moving randomly once every second. So now let's keep score.
I've straightened these up a bit to make room for the next set where we will be keeping score. This is what the end set of blocks will look like. And here are our instructions. Click Canvas 1 and bring out Canvas1.touched. Canvas1.touched. In the control drawer, drag out an if-else. In this version of App Inventor, we don't have an if-else. We do have an if with some settings, and that's what we want. I'm going to plug that into our Canvas 1 Touched, and then use the settings to drag an else part into that if. Drag that right there, and that now makes this an if-else. Step 3 tells us to drag out the touched sprite and place it in the if else's test socket. So we drag out the touched sprite by clicking it, using the get touched sprite, and placing it in the if socket. Now, step four, since we want hit count label to be incremented if the test succeeded, from the hit count label drawer, drag out set hit count label text. So we find our hit count label. We bring out set hit count label text and place it under the then. And then we want a plus. So we're going to go to math and get a plus. And we're going to put hit count label text on the left hand side and the number one on the right hand side. So we go to hit count label dot get text and on the right hand side here we just put the value 1 so that says if we got the touched sprite then set hit counts label text to hit counts label text plus 1 It says repeat step four for the misses count label in the else do section. And here's an easy way. Right click this and say duplicate. And then we're going to change that to misses count label. And misses count label. So now when I miss, the misses count goes up. Got it. Now I'd like to set my reset button so that those both go to zero. According to the tutorial, what we need is a reset button click with blocks saying set hits count text and hits misses count label text both to zero. So we go to the reset button. We drag out a reset button click and then we set the reset button to set the hits count label text and the misses count label text both to zero. If you type a number in App Inventor, you should be able to get a number block. There's our zero. Alright. So that resets our scores to zero. And I can hit, I can miss, I can miss a bunch, and I can reset. As we said earlier, we want the phone to vibrate when the mole is touched, which we can do with the sound1.vibrate block. So this says, when the mole touched, sound1 vibrate to 100, for 100 milliseconds. So we can pull out mole, touched, sound1, vibrate for 100 milliseconds. And you can't really feel the vibration on an emulator. You need to run this on a phone in order to, to sense this. But it does happen when you hit, it vibrates. When you miss, it does not. 
here's the complete set of blocks. These are these are in the old form. Um, I can I can help you and maybe give you a screenshot of the new form. But here's some ideas on what you can add to make MoMash a little more fun.